When you hear the name Hubble, the first thing that comes to your mind is probably the space telescope and the fact that he was a famous astronomer. Though this is true, just calling him famous is a huge understatement. He gave us classifications of the galaxies and even the Big Bang Theory we believe in and trust today. Edwin Hubble was born on November 29, 1889 in Marshville, Missouri. Throughout school, he got good grades in every subject except spelling. In high school, young Hubble was an athlete, winning many awards in track, as many as seven first places in one meet. He also practiced amateur boxing as a hobby. Once he hit college, though, his, his studies took a shift toward the stars. His dream was to be a scientist, and he followed that dream at first by going to the University of Chicago. His focuses there were mathematics, astronomy, and philosophy, good subjects to concentrate on by the man who would later go on to shatter our conception of the universe, its size, and its contents. His dying father, however, pulled him away from these studies for a while with, a, with simple requests. Hubble's love of basketball and boxing, and the fact that he excelled in them, he got the Rhodes Scholarship to Oxford. His father had never understood Edwin's love of astronomy and wanted his son to study law rather than any science. He carried out that wish at Oxford, but also studied literature in Spanish. After returning home to the U.S. in 1913, he passed the bar and practiced law for about a year, getting very bored very quickly. The same time as when he was half-heartedly practicing law, Hubble was a high school teacher and a basketball coach. He taught Spanish, physics, and math. In that year's yearbook, there was a dedication statement saying, To our beloved teacher of Spanish and physics, who has been loyal to us in our senior year, ever willing to cheer and help us both in school and on the field, we, the class of 1914, lovingly dedicate this book. Once the school year was over, Hubble moved on to what he really wanted to do and began his Ph.D. in astronomy, also leaving law as an unpleasant memory of his past. In 1917, George Hale, founder of Mount Wilson Observatory, invited Hubble to join the staff there, but he declined to go off to World War I after quickly finishing his Ph.D. thesis and taking an oral exam. After two years, he returned to the U.S. and showed up at the observatory still in his uniform, ready to observe. His main rival here was Harlow Shapley, who had calculated the size of the Milky Way. At this time, it was still believed that the Milky Way was all there was to the universe and that everything else was dust and gas in our galaxy. He spent many nights at the very powerful Hooker Telescope, wanting and trying to prove Shapley wrong about the size of our universe. He claimed that victory in 1923 by seeing a Cepheid star, one whose light varies over time. That discovery made it possible for Hubble to calculate that star's distance from Earth. After careful study, he placed that star about one million light years away, putting it in its own galaxy with millions of other stars. His discovery expanded the universe very dramatically that day and changed the world of astronomy. After discovering these new galaxies, Hubble started looking closer categorizing them by size, shape, and distance from Earth. The simplest were the ellipticals, then the basic system splits off into two forks of spirals. One fork consists of just spirals with varying rounded legs, while the other consists of barred spirals. There are also irregularly shaped galaxies, but they did not gain a place on Hubble's classification system. Hubble's greatest moment in astronomy came in 1929. He discovered, through studying the velocities of emitted light from galaxies, that the universe was expanding. He came to say that all galaxies seemed to be receding from us with the velocity that increased within proportion to their distance from us. This became known as Hubble's Law. Einstein, who had decided that the universe was static or unmoving, had originally believed that the universe was expanding. Hubble's discovery proved that Einstein had been correct in the first place and also led to the creation of the Big Bang Theory. Edwin Hubble was awarded the 1939 Franklin Medal in Physics for his, quote, extensive study of the nebulae, particularly those outside our galaxy, as a result of which the dimensions of observed space have, have been greatly increased, end quote. Only a year later, in 1940, Hubble was awarded the Gold Medal of the Royal Astronomical Society for his achievements in the world of astronomy. Hubble continued his studies on Mount Wilson until 1942 when he went off to war again, this time serving in World War II. In 1946, he was awarded the Medal of Merit and sent back home. 
His next and final main achievement was playing a key role in the development of the Hale Telescope, which was many times more powerful than the previous Hooker Telescope. In the year 2008, there was even a stamp made for the man who expanded our universe so greatly. Launched in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope was named in honor of the beloved Edwin Hubble, who died on September 28, 1953, at the age of 64, while preparing for yet more observations of the cosmos. The next pictures are just a few of those taken by the Hubble Space Telescope over the years.